Oh, hi, gang. You're just in time to help me put some money into my savings banks. Well, since I sometimes have different kinds of coins, I decided to get different kinds of banks. Whenever possible. So, do you want to help me save my coins? Well, that's easy. The coin that's worth the most goes into the biggest bank. You got it. Let's start with the coin that's worth the most. Right. So which bank does the quarter go into? Right. Now, which of these coins is worth the most? Nope. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. But actually, size has nothing to do with the value of a coin. Really. See, even though it's our smallest coin, the dime is actually worth two nickels or ten pennies. Bingo. And that leaves us with two kinds of coins and two banks. <laughs> Way to go. And that means these pennies go right. You did great, gang. Gee, you might want to get your own bank and start saving spare chains. It's really fun to watch your savings grow. Oh, well, when you get older, you can get a job. But you know what? The kids at the Shining Time Station have found a way to earn some money. You want to see how they do it? Good. Well, here we go. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there. and cookies. How much? Five cents, miss. Oh, well, Mommy can't complain about me spending that kind of money. How supreme! They're scrumptious. Here you go. Well, I'll just have to drop in again. Au revoir, Giblets. Yes! yes. Congratulations, Jay! You made your first nickel. Why, that's almost five cents. But uh, it was just one nickel. How would you like to make ten nickels? Yeah. How would you like to make fifty nickels? Yeah. How would you like to make a hundred nickels? Yeah. But how, Schemer? How do I do it? How do we do it? How? 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 By forming a partnership with me. A partnership. My kids. You want to make money, don't you? Yeah! Okay, it's a deal, it's a deal. Now, you kids wait right here, okay? And I'm going to be back before you can slice a lemon with our new management team. <laughs> okay, partners. <laughs> Is what? Hello, everyone. Hi, Mr. Conductor. Where have you been? Oh, I'm running in the Minkfield Marathon against a tortoise. What are you doing here? Is the race over? Yeah. Oh, I left the tortoise at the starting line. He's so far behind me, I don't have anything to worry about. So I thought I'd come back here and relax for a while. Say, is that lemonade? 
I could use something cold to drink. into business for yourselves. Well, we were in business for ourselves, but now Schemer's joined us. He said we'll make a lot of money. Hmm. I don't like the sound of that. But he's our partner. Hmm. Now let me see. That means he's one part and you're another part. And if one part doesn't get along with another part, then you'll have to part. And if the two parts are apart, how can I tell you apart? <laughs> Oh, this partnership business is very confusing. If things keep going like this, you'll end up like Donald and Douglas in the break van. Mm, Where are they? You don't know the two Scottish twins, Donald and Douglas? Of course you don't know Donald and Douglas, because I haven't told you about Donald and Douglas. Or was it Douglas and Donald? Do you have time to tell us a story? I mean... Aren't you supposed to be running a race against the tortoise? Don't worry about him. He probably isn't even to Point Pokey yet. Now, where was I? <laughs> oh, yes. Donald and Douglas. <laughs> Donald and Douglas are twins and had arrived from Scotland to help Sir Topham Hatt. But only one engine had been expected. The twins meant well, but did cause confusion. Sir Topham Hatt had given them numbers, Donald 9 and Douglas 10. But he was still planning to send one engine home. There was a brake van in the yard that had taken a dislike to Douglas. Things always went wrong when he had to take it out. His trains were late and he was blamed. Douglas began to worry. Donald, his twin, was angry. You're a muckle nuisance, said Donald. It's to leave you behind I be wanting. You can't, said the brake van. I'm essential. Ah, are you? Donald burst out. You're nothing but a screeching and a noise when all's said and done. Spite doggy, would you? Take that. Oh, oh, cried the van. There's more coming should you misbehave. The van behaved better after that. Until one day, Donald had an accident. The rails were slippery. He couldn't stop in time. Donald wasn't hurt, but Sir Topham Hatt was most annoyed. I am disappointed, Donald. I didn't expect such mm, clumsiness from you. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. I'm sorry, sir, said Donald. I should think so, too. You have upset my arrangements. Now James will have to help with the goods work while you have your tender mended. James won't like that. Sir Topham Hatt was right. James grumbled dreadfully about extra work. Anyone would think, said Douglas, that Donald had had his accident on purpose. I hear tell about an engine and some tire wagons. Shut up, said James. It's not funny. He didn't like to be reminded of his own accident. Well, well, well. Surely, James, it wasn't you. You didn't say. James didn't say. He slouched sulkily away. James is cross, snickered the spiteful brake van. We'll try to make him crosser still. Hold back, giggled the freight cars to each other. James did his best, but he was exhausted when they reached Edward's station. Luckily, Douglas was there. Help me up the hill, please, panted James. These freight cars are playing tricks. We'll show them, said Douglas. <laughs> Slow.
Slowly but surely, the snorting engines forced the freight cars up the hill. But James was losing steam. I can't do it! I can't do it! Leave it to me, shouted Douglas. The conductor was anxious. Go steady. The van's breaking. The van was in pieces. No one had been hurt, and soon Edward came to clear the mess. Sir Topham Hatt was on board. I might have known it would be Douglas, he said. Douglas was grand, sir, said Edward. James had no steam left, but Douglas worked hard enough for three. I heard him from my yard. Two would have been enough, said Sir Topham Hatt. I want to be fair, Douglas, but I don't know. I really don't know. Sir Topham Hatt was making up his mind about which engine to send away, but that's another story. So, as Donald and Douglas learned, sometimes it's better to go about your business and not get sidetracked by the likes of a nasty brake van. Fellow partners and soon-to-be lemoneers, gather round! While I introduce to you our new management team, I'm speaking of my nephew, Little Skeemy! Hi, kids. Grayson will get out of my way, please. Now, first thing first, we raise prices. Lemonade goes up to six cents, and cookies go up to seven and a half cents. There's no such thing as seven and a half cents. Okay. Ow, ow, ow. Twist my arm. We make it eight cents. You gotta love this kid. You gotta love him. And hey, let's put more water in the lemonade. Always thinking, always thinking. I don't know where he gets it from. I really, really don't. And such impeccable taste in clothing. Uh, uh, kids, listen. Uh, now I want you to be listening to everything the schemey has to say, okay? Because well, his ideas are... <laughs> okay, some rules for customers. Everyone, repeat after me. You touch it, you bought it. You, you touch, touch it, it, you, you bought, bought it. it. Oh, shop till I drop. I've simply got to have some lemonade and cookies, especially when... Oh, how tacky. You raised your prices. I'm sorry, miss, but we have a new partner. Oh, look, well, don't talk to me about business. All I want is one of your delicious cookies. <laughs> Absolutely. I want my money back. Sorry, lady. You touched it. You bought it. What? Uh, but that, that's crazy. These cookies are hey, disgusting. Hey, 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 hey. What's going on here? Uncle Schemer, this lady's mad about the way I'm cheating her. I just had a perfectly dreadful cookie. Hey, come on, lady. Uh, those are the best cookies this side of Dilly Lick. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And could you swallow one? Hey, as long as it's not my pride, I can swallow anything. <laughs> These are the best tasting cookies I've been space I've in my entire life. Well, yes, I suppose I can't argue with that. But that's the last time I come to this lemonade stand. <laughs> <laughs> introduce to you my young nephew, little Schemey. It's a most sincere pleasure to make your acquaintance, Miss Moot. Oh, what a darling little boy. I heard you were in town visiting your uncle this week. Oh, is this a lemonade stand? Oh, how wonderful. Ma'am, I'd be most honored if you let me and my good friends 
So you are lemonade and cookies for your part. Oh, that would be perfect. Well, uh, well, uh, in that case, uh, what the heck are we waiting for? Why don't we step outside, skimmy, and uh, draw up a contract? Wow! If we sell all our cookies and lemonade for Mitch Moot's party, we'll make tons of money. Yes. Hey, Billy, did you hear what I heard? That Dan and Becky and Kara are going to cater Mitch Smoot's garden party. Huh? Miss Smoot must trust you or she wouldn't want your lemonade. You should be proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, two, please. I don't think that's such a good idea, you see. Yeah, uh, maybe you should wait until we make a new batch of stuff. Why, you've got plenty here. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Mm. Maybe some um, some lemonade would be good. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's some. That's some some lemonade. That's lemonade. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's okay. You don't have to finish it. Uh, you're probably not all that hungry. That's right. We just had a big meal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe maybe we'll have some later. Yeah. Later. <laughs> yeah. I'm not so sure what we're doing is right. Yeah, Billy and Aunt Stacy were just being nice. They think we don't know how to make good cookies or lemonade, but we do. Yeah. And we aren't. Because we got too greedy. Pretty classy, eh? Lemonade. Lemonade man. Bye, bye, bye. You are thirsty? I knew you'd love it. Uh, schemey, schemer, there's a problem. You see, we don't like the way things are going. Well, where are things going? cheating people anymore. Yeah, we're not being fair. Fair? Hey, the lemonade business is never fair. Kids, it's a dog-eat-cookie world out there. But, uh, well, if that's the way you feel about it, mm -hmm. all right. I accept your resignations. What? Yes, 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 you're absolutely correct. If you're not happy here, bang, you should quit. But we're not. But, 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 but there are no buts. Not There's no buts. The nickel stops here, kids. The nickel stops here. And, uh, well, just to show you that there's no hard feelings from me and Schemey here, I want you kids to have the last of the lemons. <laughs> like we would ever use them anyway. <laughs> it saddens us, but, uh, well, that is the way the lemon squirts. All we wanted was a lemonade stand so we could earn some extra money. And when we told Schemer and Schemey to make real lemonade and good-tasting cookies, they took away our stand. Yeah, they tricked us. Sounds like you tricked yourself. Besides, the way I see it, Schemer did you all a favor. They took away our stand. What kind of a favor is that? Well, if you had it back, would you water down the lemonade and put pepper in the cookies? No. Mm -hmm. Well, then, see, Schemer and Schemey showed you the wrong way to run a lemonade stand. The next time round... You'll do it the right way. How can there be a next time? They've got everything. Well, not everything. I still see some lemons out there. But Schemer and Schemer are already making lemonade. Well, there's more to making things with lemons than just lemonade. Like what? Well, like, um, let's be creative. You know, without being pie in the sky, of course. What do you mean? Pie! Mm -hmm. That's how we can make lemon pie! What a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Or lemon tarts! Uh -huh. And cookies! Yeah! Mm. This time we're gonna do it our way, the right way. The first job Tex and me had was inside a radio in a bank. Always had to play, brother, can you spare a dime? Well, that's why the best place to work is a train station. Because you get to play songs like... Erie Canal. Let's hit it. <laughs> I got a mule and the name is Sal. Fifteen miles on the Erie Canal. He's a good old worker and a good old pal. Fifteen miles on the Erie Canal. 
it down. Low bridge, for we're going through a town. And you'll always know your neighbor, you'll always know your pal if you've ever navigated on the Erie Canal. Lemonade. Well, that's original, I must say. We thought of it. Everyone is pulling together, I see. Splendid. Now I just have to figure out how to tie this knot. So, Mr. Conductor, who won the race? The race? Oh, yes, the race. Well, it was close. It was so close that we both won. You and the tortoise both won? Yes. His coach, who kept cheering him on, said it was a tie. And speaking of ties and pulling together, I have to say, the engines on the island of Sodor have really pulled together. There! I've got it! Why? What have they done? Let me try one of your lemon pies and I'll explain. Snow came early to the island of Sodor. It was heavier than usual. Most engines hate snow. Donald and Douglas were used to it. Coupled back to back with a van between their tenders and a snowplow on their fronts, they set to work. They puffed backwards and forwards patrolling the line. Generally, the snow slipped away easily, but sometimes they found deeper drifts. Presently, they came to a drift which was larger than most. They charged it and were just backing for another try when... Help! Help! Lost six, Donald! It's Henry! Don't worry yourself, Henry! Wait a while! We'll have you out! Henry was very grateful. He saw all was not well. The twins were looking glum. They told him Sir Topham Hatt was making a decision. He'll send us away for sure. It's a shame, said Percy. A lot of nonsense about a broken signal box, grumbled Gordon. That spiteful brake van, too, put in James. Good riddance, that's what I say. The twins were splendid in the snow, added Henry. It isn't fair. They all agreed that something must be done, but none knew what. Percy decided to talk to Edward about it. What you need, said Edward, is a deputation. He explained what that was. Percy ran back quickly. Edward says we need a, a depot station. Of course, said Gordon. The question is... What is a desperation? asked Henry. It's when engines tell Sir Topham Hatt something's wrong, said Percy. Did you say tell Sir Topham Hatt? asked Duck thoughtfully. There was a long silence. I propose, said Gordon, that Percy be our... Uh, Disputation. Me? Squeaked Percy. I can't. Rubbish, Percy, said Henry. It's easy. That's settled then, said Gordon. Poor Percy wished it wasn't. Hello, Percy. It's nice to be back. Percy jumped. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir. You look nervous, Percy. What's the matter? 
Please, sir, uh, they've, they've made me a desperation, sir, uh, to, sp to speak to you, sir. I, I don't like it, sir. Sir Topham Hatt pondered. Do you mean a deputation, Percy? Yes, sir, please, sir. Uh, it's Donald and Douglas. They say, sir, that if you send them away, sir, w well, they'll be turned into scrap, sir. That would be dreadful, sir. Uh, please, sir, don't send them away. Thank you, Percy. That will do. Later, Sir Topham Hatt spoke to the engines. I had a, a deputation. I understand your feelings, and I've given a lot of thought to the matter. He paused impressively. Donald and Douglas, I hear that your work in the snow was good. You shall have a new coat of paint. The twins were surprised. Thank ye, sir. But your names will be painted on you. We'll have no more mistakes. Thank ye, sir. Uh, d does this mean that the both of us? Sir Topham Hatt smiled. It means... But the rest of his speech was drowned in a delighted chorus of cheers and whistles. The twins were here to stay. So, as you can see, some of the most surprising things can happen when you stand up for what you believe. And speaking of believing, it's time to be leaving. Scheme team. Looks like we have some competition. Well, since you took over their last stand, the kids thought they'd start another one. Yeah. yeah. All right, ladies. Just keep going around in a circle. Ah, oh, my dear Midge Smoot. I was Don't a... you dear Midge Smoot me? Why, you're lucky my dog is better. After eating two of your cookies, he was sick all afternoon. Well, it's hardly our fault that the yeah, dog got sick. It wasn't our fault. Like, oh, no, just be quiet, you little twerp. We are going to keep marching until this stand is under new management. We'll stop people from buying anything. Ladies? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't, you don't mean the arcade. I mean, that means no more money for the jukebox. People can't buy cheese. Get and I want my money back. <laughs> new management! New management! Come on! Go, 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 Oh. And we have a policy. What kind of policy, dear? Well, we say that honesty is the best policy. Yes. Oh, it'll be a pleasure dealing with honest people once more. Ladies, we have accomplished our mission. <coughs> Kids, we'll see you at the garden party. As for you, schemer, if you ever, ever ever try, or even think of trying, or consider pulling such a stunt again, I personally will bring every member of the Friends of the Flowering Cactus Ladies Auxiliary down here to pick at your arcade. And that is no joke. Oh. Wait a minute. Friends of the Flowering Cactus Ladies Auxiliary? My mommy is in that group. Uh, I'm it! Did I hear someone say something about honesty being the best policy? Gee, Mr. Conductor, whenever we did the right thing, everything worked out. Of course, because when you're honest, things have a way of rolling along nicely. Speaking of rolling... Mr. Conductor, look out! Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting for
before you So much to see So far to travel So much to learn to know Friends by your side Hopes to hold on to Who knows how far you'll go To a shining time station Where dreams can come true Your own imagination Waiting there for you You can call me Honest Abe Because I've always believed Honesty is the best policy Yes, I know, that schemer fella reminds me of some politicians I've dealt with over the years. Well, Anthony and I are old friends. He saves pennies for me, and every so often I drop by and give him a dollar bill in exchange for a hundred shiny pennies. Well, to be perfectly honest, I like pennies because they have my picture on them. I am. I mean, a penny isn't worth very much all by itself. But after all, a penny saved is a penny earned. Listen closely, and I'll teach you a song about it. Each time you find a shiny coin, you have your luck to thank. But should you spend it right away or put it in the bank? I've earned some money here and there, and one thing that I've learned, with each coin you drop into your bank, a penny saved is a penny earned. With every coin you put away, you'll see your savings grow. A nickel here, a quarter over there, it all adds up, you know. Yes, I've earned some money here and there, and one thing that I've learned, with each coin you drop into your bank, a penny saved, here's a penny earned. There'll be times to take your bank from off the shelf, and buy a treat for mom or dad, or for yourself. Yes, I've earned some money here and there, and one thing that I've learned, with each coin you drop into your bank, a penny saved is a penny earned. A penny saved is a penny earned. Well, thank you. I appreciate your support, but sadly enough, I'm afraid it's time for me to go. I will if you will. Honest? Good. Well, so long for now. Ah. Goodbye. And remember, save your pennies.